Okay, so this video is an introductory video to Adobe InDesign CS5. So here it goes. Again, this is a very beginning introductory video for those people who uh, have never created documents in InDesign, um, and there'll be more to follow. Okay, so we begin. We launch in Adobe InDesign CS5, and we begin. We see this first window. Now, we can see that we have these options to create new now the open recent items are the files that were being worked on previously on my computer. So what that means is probably if you've never launched InDesign before or haven't worked in InDesign yet, you won't see anything here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let's actually begin and let's say we want to create a new document. Now I do this and this is the screen that pops up. Now we have the option, option for a document, a book, and a library. Now, most times we will work uh, mostly with a document. A book um, has to do a lot of times when you're creating a book in InDesign, you're taking different documents and putting them together. So now if I already had a file that I was working on and I didn't see it here, I could just click open and I could come in and you can see all of the ones that are in design would be lit, lighting up right now. But they're not. So I'm going to just come create new document and here we go. Now, just like we find in Adobe, in, in Adobe, there are a bunch of different ways to do the same thing. So not only could I go from this opening screen, but I could just come file new and I have my document and here we are. Okay, so we have a little preview over and taking a look at this opening screen here. What does this all mean? What well, we can say, how many pages do we have? Um, we could say how many facing pages. Uh, so this would be if it was a book or a magazine with facing pages. Um, now what else we can see is we come on down into page size. We can see that we have all of these different page sizes that we could work with. Now also we could come from um, our intent if we want to work print or the web. So if we come to web, we're going to see everything changes to pixels. But when we're in print, we're actually looking at this very... Um, standard unit of measurement which is picas. Now um, the story with picas it's a, a unit of measurement that's used quite a bit in in print but if you wanted to you could even come in and put okay I want eight inches and we're gonna find whoops and I hit return um, we're gonna find that when we do so it will actually change it into um, so I can say, if I put this into eight, eight inches, and I click down, and here I can see this turns it into 48 picas. So there are six picas in each inch. Okay, so here we have our document, um, and we can see that we have our screen that we're going to work on. So let's actually just take a look at how we'd go about creating type. So we have our toolbar floating right here. Uh, we have our selection tool, our direct selection tool, we have our gap tool, and we're going to start right here with our type tool, and we're going to come on in. What we can see is we can actually click it on out. We can draw a text box, and I'm going to say in design CS5 introduction. Da -da -da -da. Now I can highlight my text. I can come on up here. I can make it bigger. I'm going to make it up, let's make it 48 up, oh, and I can see that that actually, whenever you see this little red box, it's running out of the side. It doesn't fit in the box. Now, what you can do with that is you can change the size of the box if you'd like. Um, but I'm going to click on to here, click on to my box, and what I want to do is I want to actually change the size of this box. So I can pull it out, make it all fit on here. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is actually bring my box in to fit on around here. Now, let's say that I wanted to center this on my page. Well, actually, as soon as I see this guide right here, it's centered. Okay, as soon as that comes out. Now, I can come down to the center here, too, and now I have this place directly in the center. Okay, so now let's say that I decided, hmm, I like this, I have it placed directly in the center, but now I want to put a color fill around it. Well, what I could do is I could come on in, I could grab my rectangle tool, I could draw a box around this, 
Okay, now if I wanted to put a fill on here, I can just come on into my color here and I could put in a color. Let's open up the swatches. Hold on. Okay, so what I can do actually, there's a, again in our, in our programs, we're gonna find there's a whole bunch of different ways to do the same thing. So I can come on over to my color and pick a color, okay? Come into my swatches, work with it there, or I could even just double click uh, on the fill and I could choose a color in here, hit OK, and I see that my box is filled. So again, I could also come in this way and choose a color over here, e either way, okay? Now, but my problem is, let's say I wanted to, you know, add a stroke onto here too. Well, my stroke info is gonna come right in from here, and I could up the size of my stroke, um, and a bunch of working with all these different things within this box right here. Now, I want now for my text to come through so I could come on in, object, arrange, send to back. There we have it. This works actually, if you're familiar with Illustrator, this works in a very similar way. Let's say I wanted to move it, but I come and I start moving, oh no, I wanted this to move together. Well, what we'd have to do is we'd have to group it. So we could shift, we could click both of them and then we could come to object and we could group them. And then I could take these two and I could bring them up in the center to the top. There we have it. Okay, now let's say that I wanted to begin and start placing some images in. How do I go about placing images in? And we're gonna find there's actually uh, quite a bit of different ways to do the same thing. So I could come on in, I could say file, whoops, I come on in file, place, and then I could come and I can find, and of course, you know, you'll have a spot where you put these on. I have these in my projects in progress, and I'm gonna choose pick one and say open. And then what I see is as I come around, I can see that I this image is floating right inside of my um my black arrow, my selection tool, so I can click. Now if I clicked right here, it places the image as big as it is. Okay, and here's the image completely in its in its size, um, and it's not really within a frame. Uh, now same thing, if I wanted to move this behind this image, I could. Now, what about if I wanted to resize it? Well, I could just click the side, and what I'm doing now, there's two different things with this as we work with our images in InDesign, we're gonna find that there's the frame, the box that it comes into, and then there is the image. So how do I get this? And now we also see this uh, circle in the center. This is the content. We can actually move the content within this frame independently of the frame. So let's say, hmm, I wanted the frame to be this size and I wanted to kind of crop it. Now what about if I wanna see the whole image inside of here? Well, I can click on into here and I can click, I can come and I have these different options when this image is selected. Let's take a look at some of these. So the first one is to fill the frame proportionally. So I click that and there I can see it's actually filling the frame proportionally. Okay. My next one is to fit the content proportionally. Okay. My, my third one is, is to fit the content to the frame. Okay, this one is to fit the frame to the content. That will make it really big, okay? And the last one is to center the content. So you can even center the content within there. Uh, now, one thing that we wanna make sure when we work with this is that we don't want um, our image, the relationship of the width and the height, the image to get warped, which can happen very easily. So I'm going to click on that one, and there we can see we have it and I can move this box around. Now if I wanted to move the image in the frame, I would click right here and do so. And that's really great as we can see how our guides within InDesign work beautifully. As I take my image and move it over, I can see that it's lining up with this header that I have right here. Again, I can hover, see when it's directly in the center, even get a sense of when it's in um, the center uh, both on the X and the Y axis. Now, let's say that I wanted this image to be a background image. Well, if I come up here and it's over top of my header of sorts, I can come on in, I can come to Object, Arrange, Send to Back. And now this can be behind here. 
if I wanted to make it bigger, again, I can make the frame bigger. And then I could take this image right here and once again, I can fit the content to the frame and there we have it. Okay, so we can see all of these different ways that we can continue to work. You can even make this, you know, I can even make my frame, let's say I wanted to make my frame uh, bigger this way. Um, and then I could say, I could come in again and say fit content proportionally. Oops, hold on, let's try that one again. What I would want to do, fit content to frame. Now, see what happens when I do that? See what happens? What happens is, is uh, the image gets warped. That I don't want to do. So what I could I could come instead is fit frame to content. All right, let's try this one more time. Um, and we could say, we could center the content, but if we start right here, fill frame proportionally. All right, that's more the one that I want because what's going to happen, it's going to keep the relationship between the width and the height here intact without warping it. All right, so another thing is I'm lining things up. I might want to pull out some guides. And if I'm showing my rulers, I can click this out and I can put guides in different place, places. So maybe what I might want to do is if I have my guides, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Come on in here. I'm going to fit my content to my frame. Um, fill frame proportionally. Excellent. That's the one I want. Fill frame proportionally. So now let's say that I want to pull out this right here. And then, you know, I want to come on in. Now what I might want to do too is make my box first. So this image right here is a rectangle frame tool. So I can click and I can actually make my frame first. With this frame selected, I can come to File, Place, and I can come, I can grab, actually I'm gonna grab Pick 3. I'm gonna say Open, and there it is. It's placed within here. Now, again, what's happened as I look at this, um, I can see that, you know, I put it inside of this frame, but it doesn't fit inside of here. So I can come on in with the content, um, with this little circle in the center, but I can also select on this and I can fill the frame proportionally. Um, and I can play around with these fit content to frame. And again, that warps it. I don't like that one. I can say fit frame to content. So there we have it. Maybe I like that one a little bit better. And I can continue to work with this as I would like to. Now, let's say I wanted to come on in and move this up. I want to line this right up to here. And maybe I want to put in another tagline of type. Well, that's easy to do. I can click. There's two different ways that we can even, and when we do our type, we want to actually, we can make a box. We can click inside of it. And we can even, if we would like to, we can even change our font color, clicking the T of the type. And I can come and say, this is blue type. Okay, again, I can uh, change the size of this. I can highlight it. I can select it. I can make it bigger. Okay, if I wanted to change the actual font of it, I could do that too. I could change it to Monaco. I can click onto here. Again, I need to select my box. Now, in order to get the selection of the box, I actually need my selection tool. And I can make this bigger. I can move this around. Um, so on and so forth. So we can see these are some of the different options that we begin to have as we work um, with InDesign. Now, let's say I wanted to export this image out because um, we could save it as an InDesign. So when we come and we save these, we come save as, save as um, example InDesign. Now, what we're going to find as we as we do that that it will be an INDD file. Now all of these images are actually all linked. Okay, they're actually all linked. So when you move it to a different place, the images need to move with it. So your best bet if you're exporting it is you want to export it as an Adobe PDF. So we just come into Adobe PDF and I'm going to click this one. It doesn't really matter. I'll say save and then we're exporting it as a PDF. And uh, the PDF would be what we, we could uh, send to someone who wanted to view this who didn't have InDesign. So I come on in, I come to Photos, I believe it exported it. 
right into here. And here it is, example PDF. I'm just going to open this up and we can see there we have it, the PDF. I'll end there. There'll be more videos to follow on different topics in Adobe InDesign CS5.